Okay, uh, hi there everyone, uh, Dave back again. Um, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate the um, software operation of the Dropheart control board and its associated PC application. Um, so in the past, in the, previously in the Instructable, I've um, explained the, the, the board itself and, uh, and also there was the LCD which I had tethered to the board over a little cable so I could purposes of that being as I said before so I could actually you know you can get to the board now I've actually fitted the LCD uh, to the board and it's plugged in underneath um, as it as it plugged in underneath here as it as it should be um, so it's like a sort of con contained unit now okay so uh, right without further ado then I'm gonna just so when I when I first power it up when I switch it on there'll be a splash screen which just says what it is um, and that's got like my name on stuff like that on it so if I power it up now Welcome to Drop Heart version 1.0 by Dave Treeren. And that lasts. I've made it last a little bit longer than it would normally last, just so you can actually see it. And now we get this we get this screen. Um, the first thing to point out is that these red LED, this is the heartbeat LED, performs no real purpose. It's just to um, to it just allow it just um, it just shows you that the, the microprocessor, the, the firmware on the microprocessor is actually running. Obviously, it's it's obvious that it's running because the, we've a, we have we have the display up, <clears throat> but it might not always be obvious. I usually include a, a heartbeat LEDs just as a feel good factor. <clears throat> uh, this LED is the USB connected LED. Um, we currently haven't got the um, application PC application connected, so it's on, so it's disconnected. So what have we got on this screen? Now I've tried to make these as um, understandable as possible. Any suggestions? Far away. So this particular unit is capable of, of discharging two drops at different intervals. So uh, this field up here, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six fields on this screen. Uh, the first field up here is uh, drop one SZ or drop one size. Uh, we then got drop two size. These are in these are in milliseconds, which is how long the, the valve actually stays open to actually um, deposit the drop. I mean, it's difficult to know what unit to use, so time seems a fairly good one. Uh, the third field is drop two delay. So the reason there's a drop two delay and not a drop one delay is because obviously drop one is at time zero. So drop one drops when, when you tell it to drop. Uh, and then there's a delay and then you get drop two. So that's why there's only a drop two delay. It's, I think that's fairly obvious. Uh, we then got a uh, FLS delay or flash delay uh, in getting milliseconds from time zero. The, 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 the timing diagram, I won't explain the time, the exact timings now because there's a, there's a timing diagram and that's explained in a bit more detail. But um, <clears throat> suffice to say, that's 250 milliseconds from sort of time zero. Shutter delay, it, 200 milliseconds from, from time zero. And then there's a configuration. So you can have up to four configurations. Okay. Now, what should we cover next? Okay, so let's, let's just try, let's just, so ba and also basically we've got, a, we've got a flashing cursor. I hope you can see that, that cursor flashing. There's a little triangular cursor. So in when the cursor is flashing, that means we're not in a we're not in a change mode. So if I rotate the um, the, the the encoder here, we can see the cursor moving from one field to the next. So it goes to flash delay, shutter delay, configuration, one more click and it's back. So it basically just allows you to navigate through the menu. I mean I figured that you know, um, I've you know doing doing drop art photography. What I tend to do is set the parameters up, and then I only tend to change one parameter at a time. You're not tending to sort of like you know. Usually, what you what you're adjusting is you the, the drop sizes stay pretty much fixed, and then what you tend to be adjusting quite quite a lot is the drop two delay and maybe the flash delay, um, but one at a time. You're not twiddling both. It's hard enough doing one never mind two so that that's why we've only got one control but multiple fields so um, okay so let's connect I'm now gonna I'm now gonna um, I've got a picture in picture so you can see the um, the software on the PC in the corner here so if I if I now uh, connect okay so I've now connected the PC software and you can see here 
the um, connect light has gone out, which means we've connected. So now, if I adjust any of the if I adjust any of the parameters on the uh, on the on the hardware, so let's pick a parameter to adjust. At the moment, we're in a mode where we're just change we're just moving between parameters. So if you want to actually change a parameter. What you do is this button has got a, a center. This uh, controller has got a center button. So if you push the center button, now you notice that the flashing arrow has gone solid. It's no longer flashing, which means we're in a change mode. So now, if I adjust the value in milliseconds, so you can see it changing on the LCD, but it's also changing on the um, PC application software as well. I hope you can see that. So let's take it back to 50. Then we push the button again. So now we're in a, a sort of a move mode, if you like. So we move to, say, let's move to uh, drop two delay. Push the button again. And as we adjust this, it adjusts on the uh, LCD and also on the uh, PC application software at the same time. Okay, so we we'll go back to, let's move it back over here. Now, what else we can do is uh, if I, then move the, to the PC application software. If I change a value on the PC, so let's change to 50 again, drop one size, 51. You see it changes on the uh, PC application, but it's also changing on the LCD at the same time. So they're, they're, they sort of go both ways. If whatever you change on the LCD appears on the PC application and vice versa. So we go back to 50. If I change the uh, shutter delay on the PC, shutter delay goes up on the um, LCD. I think that's pretty clear. Um, what else can we say? Okay, well, there's several things we can say here. Oh, on the PC application, there's a little about button. It just tells you what it is, version, copyright, usual little splash screen. Uh, now, in terms of configuration, now, again, this works both ways. So on the PC application, I've just put a load of numbers in. Some of these numbers are, you know, these numbers don't mean anything. I just, I just use different numbers for each configuration so you can see them changing. Clearly, they, they're, they're, these aren't ones I've actually used to do any drop photography. I've just put them in so you can cheat to see things all changing. So if I go to configuration one, all the values change on both the LCD and the PC application. Um, then uh, configuration two, Configuration three, if we go back to configuration zero. And similarly, if I navigate to the configuration field on the hardware, press the center button, so we go into a change mode. Configuration one, configuration two. Again, it's changing on the PC as well. Configuration three, then back to configuration zero. Out of change mode, move it back to wherever you want to move it. Okay. So that's so basically that's changing any of the fields on the hardware, changes on the PC, and, and vice versa. Now um, I've included what I call a purge mode um, um, as a as a feature or a function because it occurred to me that if somebody's putting through, say, some other substance through the dropper, like milk or well, whatever, something other than water. Um, you, you might want to flush that out. You don't want to leave milk inside your um, valve because that's obviously going to get a bit unpleasant after a while. So you need some way. I mean, you could sit there going drop, 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 drop and try and flush it through. But I decided to include a purge mode. So by purge mode, me, that means that basically you, you, you're able to open the valve continuously and just let. So you could fill the reservoir up with clean water press the purge button and then it will just literally run all the way through the valve and flush it out. So in order to uh, enter purge mode on the hardware, this is this button here is the drop release button. So I um, mean I've got no nothing connected here, but obviously if I if I push this, then that's going to that will have event that would have done a drop as has been demonstrated elsewhere. But if I push and hold this button for th about 3 or 4 seconds, and you can see on the PC application, the uh, little box in the bottom right hand corner has gone from purge to purging and has gone red. So if I had the uh, valve connected, the valve would now be open and the liquid just would just be pouring straight through the valve, cleaning it. I've still got my finger on the button. If I release my if I release the button on the hardware, then then the valve closes and we go back from purging to purge and the, and it goes from red to clear. 
So I hope that's clear. But obviously, you can obviously you can release the the drop from the hardware by pushing the, the hardware release button, or you can um, press the drop release button on the software over here. Either either or. Um, so all these fields are. Uh, there's three characters per field, so they all go from um, zero to nine nine nine. Um, now, what happens if you only want to do one drop? Say you only want to do. Um, say you only want to only want one drop to, um, to to you know to fire off. So, in order to get one drop, basically what you do is you set the drop to size to zero. It's that simple. So if I change this here, well, I, actually I'll do it on the PC because it's just easier. So I delete that and put in zero. You can type or you can use the up down buttons, it doesn't really matter. So that's gone to zero and the hardware field has also gone to zero. So in that particular mode, because the drop two size is zero, I would only get one drop. Okay, so if I change that back to 50 again uh, on the PC, goes to 50 on the hardware as well okay now what other thing might it do oh yeah one one other sort of small feature uh, obviously you it, it doesn't make sense to have a flash delay which is less than the shutter delay I mean obviously there's no point firing the flash before the shutters even open so if you were to set um, a flash delay so at the moment the shutter delay is 200 the flash delay is 250 so if I set the flash delay to say 150 It goes red, which means what you're doing. That doesn't make sense. You can't have a flash delay less than the shutter delay. Now, and also you'll notice on the hardware, we get a little question mark comes up here, which basically means you're an empty, and that doesn't make sense. So, um, so I put 250 back in, or some number bigger than 200. Oops, oh, sorry, typed the wrong thing. Um, Put in 250. Sorry, I pressed the wrong key. I'm trying to lean over to get to the keyboard. So they've both gone to 250 and it's now not red. Now, what happens now? There's two modes of operation, as, as I pointed out before. You can have a, a mode where uh, the hardware fires, uh, opens the camera shutter on, in B mode and then fires the flash, or you may wish the camera to fire the flash. So there's two, two modes of operation. So if, in order to configure it, at the moment, because there's a flash delay and a shutter delay, and the flash delay is larger than the shutter delay, what's going to happen is the, um, the hardware will open the shutter after 200 milliseconds, and then after 250 milliseconds, or another 50 milliseconds, it'll, it'll fire the flash. But if you, wanna, if you want the hardware to um, basically just fire the shutter and allow the camera to fire the flash, so basically no hardware control of the flash you set the flash delay to zero so if i set if i set this to one which makes no sense it goes red but if i set it to zero it doesn't go red because that's 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 a valid mode zero flash delay means we're in now camera control mode the hardware won't fire won't fire the flash but it will fire the shutter so um so put that back to 250 and again it changes on so I, th I think that covers all the options so yeah um can't think of anything else i mean it's a pretty simple interface it's not exactly complicated and i've, I've tried to make it as easy to understand as i mean I, I don't find it difficult to to drive so um yeah okay well if anybody's got any questions or any any suggestions for improvements then um then uh, yeah then fire away Okay, uh, right, well, um, thanks for watching. Cheers.